the bread of life, born in Bethlehem, the city of bread, and laid on a feeding trough for you. What's up, YouTube? Brian here. Welcome back to 1517 Films, where in every episode, I am always contending for the faith once for all delivered to the saints. And today, it's a Law Gospel Christmas. Stick around. <laughs> One of my favorite Christmas songs is O Holy Night. I don't know why, I, I don't even necessarily care who, which artist rendition I'm listening to of it, um, but I realized this year that when you listen to regular artists perform our music, <laughs> Um, sometimes things can get lost in translation. Well, two things I noticed. One, they usually do it better than we do, which is a thing that we need to fix. Uh, their reverence and respect for the song is oftentimes much greater than ours as Christians, but totally different topic. But lyrics often get skipped. Whole stanzas often get skipped. And I heard a rendition. I don't remember whose it was, but I was listening to O Holy Night, and I heard the phrase, His law is love and his gospel is peace. Now there's something that I think we could focus on on Christmas, a proper distinction between law and gospel. Yeah, I know, it's the most Lutheran thing I've ever said, but let's think about this for a minute. God's law is love. I think that concept is lost on, on any Christian of any denomination more often than not. God's law is love. God's law is not something that he has given us to keep us from having fun. It is not something that he has given us to burden us with that we must obey. Although, well, what, why did he give it to us? He gave it to us out of love to, to show us what love towards God and love towards our neighbor truly looks like. What decent, civilized society is supposed to be. Uh, he gave it to us to protect us in this broken and fallen world. There are consequences, temporal, earthly consequences, just built into nature for breaking God's law. And ultimately, he gave us the law to show us that we cannot keep it and that we need a Savior. But he didn't just show us our need for a Savior so he could go, sucks to be you. He promised from the garden to send us a savior. And tonight, Christmas Eve, tonight is the night that we see the fulfillment of that promise. For unto you was born this day in the city of David a savior, which is Christ the Lord. But God's law is in fact love. Now, if any of us that have gone through confirmation, we'll use this law because it's a popular one. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Our, here's how sinful we are. When we're in confirmation class, we're asking Essentially, what can we get away with? How far into, let's just use the word, how far into foreplay can we get before we break the commandment? Well, Jesus amps his commandment up to 11. It says, if you even have an impure thought about someone, you have committed adultery with that person. So you're not going to get away with it. Now, how is this law that all of us wrestle with God loving us? Well, he's showing us what love towards neighbor should be. We should love and respect people, men and women alike, and not just desire after them physically and want to do these things with them. We should love them for who they are. But it's also love from God to tell us, don't do that. Never mind STDs, AIDS, or anything like that that can happen from, from flippant commit, committing of adultery. Well, that was the most Southern thing I've ever done. Um, the heartache that comes from it. As someone who's committed adultery and gotten away without ever having a disease, um, the love, the, the intimacy that is connected to you and that other person by that act, and then when that other person gets ripped away from you, it hurts hurts. God's law is love in that it protects us from the things that are going to hurt us. But us being sinners, the petulant children that we are, whenever our parents tell us don't do that, it's because our parents suck, because they're mean, and they don't want us to have any fun. But God's law is love. 
because it comes to us to keep us and protect us and to safeguard us from all of the things that are going to cause us physical or emotional damage. And here's the thing that unfortunately I think is lost on American Christianity. God's gospel is peace. It was lost on me when I was an evangelical. The, the gospel was just a, another version of the law. No, 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 no. The gospel is peace because God's law shows us that we cannot keep it and that we need a savior. And the gospel promises that savior. Tonight, Christmas Eve, when we go to church and we hear these words, let them resound for unto you is born this day a savior for you. This little child laid in a feeding trough is for you. And not only, this is not just some cute little baby. This is the God of all creation who has stepped down from his throne into your frail flesh to do what you cannot do and to bear the condemnation for what you do do. One of the most beautiful Christmas hymns is What Child Is This? And another obscure passage from this song. Nail, spear shall pierce him through. The cross be born for me, for you. Hail, hail, the word made flesh, the babe, the son of Mary. This little child has come into the world as God in human flesh to obey the law perfectly to be condemned in your place, to die your death, to rise again, and to claim you for his own. And if that doesn't bring peace to a burdened conscience, then nothing can. So let's get this right. God's law proves that he loves us, even though our habitual breaking of it makes us think that he's mean and doesn't want us to have any fun. And his gospel, the free gift of Jesus Christ for you, brings peace to a conscience that is burdened by the realization that it habitually breaks the law. This is a no strings attached. You don't have to do anything. This is not some form, some percentage game with decision theology where you do 0.01% by giving your heart to the Lord and he does the rest. He does it all, all of it. As much role as you played in the incarnation and the birth of our Lord, that's how much role you play in your own salvation. This is no strings attached. Gift of God for you. He did all of it for you. And when you sing these hymns and when you hold that candle and remember that Jesus Christ is the light of the world, when you think about how early it gets dark and this candle just shines forth with warmth while you're singing Silent Night, Remember that this beautiful treasure of a gift is yours because God loves you, no strings attached. It doesn't matter which of his laws you have broken. He has sent his son into our flesh, laid him on a feeding trough for you to bear that condemnation. This, is the, this little babe is the God who is going to grow up and use the words, I do not condemn you. And because he loves us, he will also challenge us. Now go and sin no more. God's law proves that he loves us because he wouldn't have given it if he didn't want to protect us from the things we were going to do to hurt ourselves. And his gospel is absolute peace for our conscience when we are burdened under our habitual breaking of that law. That is Christmas law and gospel, that this innocent child in Bethlehem came for you. The bread of life, born in Bethlehem, the city of bread, and laid on a feeding trough for you. So, God bless and Merry Christmas. Until next time, may God richly bless you and the grace and the mercy won for you by this child's vicarious death on the cross for all of your sins.